Main menu. You will start a new game by swiping right. To load a game you have previously started, swipe left. By swiping up, you can turn the help for the visually impaired on or off. By swiping down on the screen, you can purchase the full game. You can exit the game in the same way you exit any other application on your device. To activate the help, swipe up with two fingers on your screen at any time during the game. You're about to confirm a new game. To start a new game and rewrite your current story, swipe right on the screen. To return to the main menu, swipe left. To repeat the help, swipe up with two fingers. Evidence number 111 is an interactive audio story. You will only see basic controls on your display without any graphics. You can pause the game at any time by swiping two fingers down the screen. By swiping two fingers to the right, you can skip to the next part of the game, and by swiping to the left, you repeat the part of the game you're in right now. By swiping up, you will activate the help that will remind you how to use the controls. Your progress in the game is saved automatically. For the best experience, put on your headphones, close your eyes, and immerse yourself in the mystery of evidence number 111. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? This is Judy. I'm calling all patrols. Please report. Jim? Alice? I'm calling all patrols. Respond, goddammit! In certain moments, the story will pause, and you will be able to decide how your character, Constable Alice Wells, will act or react. You will confirm your decision by swiping your fingers on the screen. If you want to choose the first option and report to the radio, swipe to the right, if you want to choose the second option and play a joke on the woman on the radio, swipe left. If you want Alice to repeat all the options, swipe up. Shall I report to Judy or play a joke on her? This is Alice. I can hear you, Judy. Finally, someone's responded. My God, Alice, where are you? What are you doing? I'm at a petrol station about 25 miles out from town. Judy, is something happening? Listen to me carefully. I'm sending Wilson and Bowers over to you. I need you guys to close the road down and check everyone that tries to go into town, understand? If anyone tries to drive through, you will stop them, no matter what. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of your decisions result directly from the situation that you have just heard. These are usually the moments when other characters require a clear yes or no answer from you. Swipe your finger to the right if yes, you understand what Judy is asking from you, or if the answer is no, you do not understand the instructions and would like Judy to repeat them, swipe to the left. The positions of yes to the right and no to the left remain the same throughout the whole game. Do I understand what Judy wants? I understand. Of course I do. Alice, this is really important. Am I saying it's not? Then repeat what I want from you. Am I a child or something? Alice! In certain situations, Alice will be able to choose from three options. In such cases, you will pick the third option by swiping down the screen. The positions of the first and second options remain unchanged. Shall I repeat the orders to Judy or not answer at all? Or... Then repeat the orders for her. Judy, please, calm down. Alice! Calm down. Tell me what's going on. Who are we looking for? Scott and Leon, it's called. Apparently, somebody started shooting at them from a car. Before they were even able to notice what was going on, the car was gone. The only thing they know is that the car is heading towards us. What? Be careful, Alice. Damn it. That car... What was that? 
He was driving like a... That must have been him. I can't let him get away. Now you know everything you need to uncover the mystery of evidence number 111. However, be cautious about your decisions. How the story unfolds is solely up to you. I need to go after him. Damn, they're fast. What kind of a car is that? I can't keep up with him. Shall I call for backup or try to catch him alone? Judy? Hello? Hello? Judy, I think I've seen the car there. Damn it! Judy, do you copy? Alex, what's the thing? Oh, damn it! To all patrols, this is Constable Wells. I'm chasing a suspect driving into town on A31. The suspect is driving a green Lotus Elite. Ten years later. Talking and play another song. A flood emergency has been announced in seven locations. <sighs> if you can, stay inside and stay safe. And now we have another caller who would like us to play a song for them. Who do I have on the line? This is Alice. Hello, Alice. Where are you calling us from? Uh, from work. And what do you do for a living? Shall I tell him I'm a police officer? I'm a police officer. Wow! So here you have it, dear listeners. You better behave or you'll have to deal with Alice. And now what would you like us to play for you? Uh, it doesn't matter, just something comforting. Oh, what's wrong? You're not feeling well? I've got a headache, but I have some pills here. I just haven't taken them yet. Well, well, I hope you don't have any drugs in there. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I hope you feel better soon. I would like to dedicate our uh, next song not God. only to Alice, but also to other police officers, drivers, doctors, and everyone else who has to be at work during this rainy night. Shall I pick it up? <clears throat> this is Chief Inspector Ellis Wells speaking. Hello, is anyone there? I'm not really in the mood for jokes this late at night. Maybe. I don't know. What's this supposed to be? Who are you? What's your point? Do you remember a young ten-year-old boy you saw lying on the road? Do you remember how you stepped on the brakes when you saw him? I don't know what you're talking about. What the hell do you want? And do you remember how you drove away shortly after that and left him there? That never happened. Who are you?
Who is it? I have to do something. Should I record the call? Who is it? I have to do something. Should I record the call? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't care what lies you've made up about me. And now I'll hang up the phone. As you wish. In that case, I will call other phone numbers as well. There are a lot of people who would like to find out about you and that boy. If you want to blackmail me... Just theoretically, if I took your threat seriously, which I don't, what should I take? It is a sealed brown envelope, which is registered under evidence number 111. Just a small thing. Without opening the envelope, you will bring it to the Harbour Watch Inn on Cork Island near Casco Bay tomorrow evening. Sorry, what? Where? After so many years. Who could have seen me back then? I guess there is nothing I can do but listen. I should go get that envelope now while the station is not busy. But maybe I should get my stuff first. I won't have time for that later. Should I go get the envelope or pack my stuff? My head is splitting. I have my gun in the drawer. I should probably take it with me. But this headache... I've got some pills here. They'll help, but I won't be able to think straight. So I shouldn't use my gun. Maybe I'd better take the pills and leave the gun here? Should I take the gun or the pills? Or shall I take both? I won't take the pills. Who knows what's in them? What if they make me sleepy? The gun is more reliable and certainly more useful. What did that person say? A brown envelope. Evidence number 111. I don't even remember what could be in there. But who was able to find out what happened that night? After ten years? I remember that little boy very well. He had blonde hair. He was shiny, even in the dark. I'd better go. I need to find out exactly where Harbour Watch Inn is. Play by Ears presents Zoe Robbins, Rosamond Pike, Mike Bodie, Richard Reed. Kenny Blythe, Abigail Rice, Jamie Marshall, Atom Uniac, Rebecca Reesness, Paul Coltofiano, Michael Pitton, and James Beaumont. In the interactive audio story, Evidence Number 111. Here I am, Harbour Watch Inn. The typical three story Victorian house. It's like a picturesque mansion on a remote island. 
I would even consider holidaying here, but not for this weather. I should go inside. The rains are getting stronger. looked bigger from the outside and it doesn't look that nice inside musty smell tacky modern sofas greetings and... ma'am welcome to the harbour watch inn may i help you what oh m no thank you oh, you look so lost in your thoughts do you have a reservation and you are my name is ethel ethel washington i'm a receptionist here i see is something wrong done? no 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 um sorry i'm <laughs> I'm fine. You're lucky you even made it here, dear. The ferry was close to not even getting to the island at all. But let's get you warmed up by the fireplace now, shall we? Here, let me take your coat and bags. No. Uh, I mean, don't worry about it. I can, I can handle it. Well, as you wish. Once you would like to check in, I'll be behind the desk over there. There is no way I'm leaving this suitcase. Should I check in? Or should I first take a look around? Should I check in, or should I first take a look around? I'd rather take a look around here first. Who knows if that person on the phone isn't sitting here somewhere and watching me? Why have they chosen this place? Are they from here? No. No, that doesn't seem right. That would put them in danger. I... Guess there is nothing I can do but keep an eye on everything and wait. It's not that big in here. I don't even have an actual reception, just a desk in a corner. Huh? But where does that door behind it lead? Oh, that's a dining room. And it even has a bar. I could use a drink, but should I be drinking right now? One drink can't hurt. Maybe it'll calm me down a bit. Hello? Isn't there a bartender here? Is there a bartender back there? Well, what is it? Oh, I... What you want? Are you the bartender? No, I'm the chef. But Jim, who's normally in charge, couldn't come because of the storm. So, he dumped this on me. Sorry to hear that. Who cares? Can I get you anything or not? Shall I get something crazy just to teach him a lesson? But I feel like having a whiskey. Or I don't have to get anything. You know what? That's all right. What's all right? I don't need anything. You must be busy. I don't want you to have even more to do. Well, look, I don't need any of bleeding charity. But... So, can I get you anything or not? No. All right. What a charmer. Lucky I didn't get anything. You probably would have spat in it. Good evening, ma'am. Is uh, this seat taken? What? Of course. Uh, please sit, Mr... Uh, Mr. McCarthy. But uh, call me Reverend. And may I recommend, please, do not order any mixed drinks. Mr. Rogers is the chef par excellence. However, he is not very knowledgeable when it comes to alcohol. Indeed, there is nothing like whiskey. For me and for the lady. The drinks are on me. I'm sorry, I don't want to drink. Huh. As you wish. 
May God forgive me for having one more drink. Just like he has forgiven me the seven I have had already. There you go. <laughs> ah, may God repay you, Mr. Rogers. At least somebody will find it. To your courage. Why courage? Uh, do not get me wrong. You must be tremendously courageous. That is why you are here, is it not? <sighs> what do you mean by that? Oh, there is no need to be ashamed. Many people seek the excitement of haunted castles, cursed abbeys, or, in our case, hotels. I see this all the time. I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, you cannot possibly think that they would invite Reverend Timothy McCarthy here for nothing. What? Is it haunted here? Oh, there is no need to worry. As long as I am here, no ghost or even a demon can do you any harm. <laughs> Are you sure you will not have even one drink with me? It is on me. Should I drink with him? Of course you will. Two whiskeys. For me and for... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Forgive me. And your lovely name is? Alice. Gorgeous name. I love Lewis Carroll's books. <laughs> Here you go. Ah, thank you. Cheers. Ah. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the baragoves, and the momraths outgrabe. <sighs> Do you know the rest of it? Uh, recitation is my passion. Recitation and exorcism? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can sleep tight tonight, Alice. No jabberwocky will dare to disturb you. <laughs> uh, shall we have another drink? I'm sorry, but I have to go. I haven't even checked in at the reception yet. Oh, no worries. We will surely have many opportunities to carry on with our conversation. Anything but that. I should really go to the reception now, but I haven't seen the rest of the lobby and the other guests. May I check in? I'll be with you in a second, darling. Just let me finish writing this. So, where do we have it? Aha, here. Um, please write your name here. Your occupation, here. The length of stay. Which room have you booked with us? Number five. But, um, you know... Uh... The game is paused. To return to the story, swipe right on the screen. To go to the main menu, swipe left. To repeat the help, main menu. You're about to con... One one. Swipe up. Shall I report to Judy or play a joke on her? Up the whole game. Do I understand what Judy wants? What I want from you. Am I a child or... Unchanged. Shall I repeat? Then repeat... Only up to you. I need to go after him. Then... Shall I call for backup or... Judy? Years later. For a living. Shall I tell him... I'm a... Shall... Who is it? But listen to it. Should I go get the arm? Leave the gun here? Should I take the gun? I won't take the pills. Case. Should I check in? Or should I first take a look around? I'd rather take a look around here if it even has a bar. I could use a... One drink can't hurt. Maybe it'll... You anything or not? Shall I get something crazy just... You know what? That's all right. What's all right? I don't need anything. You see, take him. What? Should I drink with him? Of course you will. I should really go to the reception now. But I haven't seen the rest of the lobby and the other guests. I'm not willing to drink with this creep any longer. This 
is better already. No grumpy chefs or creepy reverends. And it could be nice and warm by the fireplace. That painting on the wall is weird. A father, mother and seven children. Must be from the Victorian era, guessing by the clothing. It's crazy to think those kids are long gone now. Oh, that person must have fallen asleep by the fireplace. Should I take a closer look at him? A male, around 60 years old. Well dressed, but his shoes don't match his belt and his hands are coarse. He's just pretending to be elegant, since he's snoring like a pig. How can he even sleep in this noise? But he looks pretty happy. Not like someone who'd take pleasure in anonymous phone calls. Hmm. However, that little family over there seems more suspicious. <laughs> but I guess their thing is infidelity and domestic violence, not threats and blackmailing. Should I go over to them, or should I try wake up the man sleeping by the fireplace? I should wait for them to stop arguing. I'll get myself a bit warm by the fireplace and try to wake up the man sleeping over there. <clears throat> oh, no, this, where am I? Oh, pardon me. I must have fallen asleep. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Uh, no, no, that's all right. <laughs> you know, I can fall asleep anywhere. Uh, now, I'm not sure, but I can't tell. Have we uh, met already? Unlikely. I, I just got here. Then I'm delighted to meet you, miss. I love meeting new, friendly people. You don't get to meet many nice people in my profession. Your profession? Oh, yes. I'm a police officer, you know. My name's John Broderick. You may have heard of me. They wrote about me six times in the paper. Are you from Glasgow? No, unfortunately. Oh, what a shame. Glasgow is a lovely city. Unfortunately, not even there does the crime sleep. But neither do the police. So you were just meditating here then, is that right? <laughs> it's a vacation, you know. Even police officers need to relax on vacation so that we're sharp for the rest of the year. But I'm just talking about myself and you haven't even introduced yourself, miss. My name's Alice Wells. Pleased to meet you, Miss Wells. Very pleased. And, if I may ask, what is it that you do and where are you from? Uh, don't be offended. I'm just a curious guy. <laughs> just a slight professional foible. Should I admit I'm also a police officer? You may not believe it, but I'm a chief inspector. Really? What's your rank, Mr. Broderick? Uh, de Detective Sergeant. Miss... Excuse me, I... <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Detective. I'm sorry. If I had any idea that you were... Uh... <laughs> Just relax. We're not on duty. And what police department do you belong to? Farnham, in Surrey. Ah, a smaller town. <laughs> Compared to Glasgow? Well, of course, Glasgow is entirely different, you know. Murders, robberies. But, on the other hand, we don't have people coming to the station and complaining that somebody has stolen their sheep. Am I right? <laughs> And what exactly are you doing here at Harbour Watch Inn? Vacationing as well? You could say that. Oh, shame the weather isn't better. I'm leaving in two days, and so far it's been raining every single day. But just between the two of us, it seems like a bigger storm is raging inside the hotel. Do you see Mr. and Mrs. Caswell over there? Let me tell you, Mrs. Caswell is really nice. But she's also equally good at swearing and crying. My room is right next to theirs. Have you met them already? Not yet, but... Caswell. That name sounds familiar. Ah, you should go over and say hi. Mrs. Caswell personally wants to meet every guest that arrives. She probably doesn't have many friends, the poor thing. Go. Go and introduce yourself. <sighs> 
Should I introduce myself to the Keswells, or go to reception? May I check in? I'll be with you in a second, darling. Just let me finish writing this. So, where do we have it? Aha, here. Um, please write your name here, your occupation here, the length of stay. Which room have you booked with us? Number five. But, um, you know, um, Mr. Broderick, are you going to sleep? It's about time, Mrs. Washington. I'm an old man, you know. Ah, so we meet again. Good evening, dear colleague. <sighs> Good evening. Shame it's so late. But tomorrow morning we definitely need to have a little chat. Have a good night. Sweetheart, I'm so sorry about that, but we've got a slight inconvenience here. What kind of inconvenience? It's about your room. It's currently unavailable. Unavailable? Yeah, sorry about that. Is someone else staying there? Well, yes. And no. Excuse me, but what does that mean? Yes and no? Ma'am, you know, Reverend McCarthy arrived unexpectedly this morning, all the way from the United States. I know. We met at the bar. So, I guess you know what he uh, specialises in. Well, so what? There's no easy way to say this, but uh, the Reverend has arrived because of your room. I've given him the keys. Nobody else is allowed in the room. In fact, nobody else can. The spare key has come up missing. What? You have nothing to worry about. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just... Huh? Nothing. Never mind. We will get a different room ready for you. A different room? But the person on the phone specifically said room number five. Shall I argue with Miss Washington? Miss Washington. Oh, call me Ethel, love. If you believe in ghosts, well, <laughs> that's your business. But I want the room I've booked. Please, be reasonable. I am. I'm not giving up my room just because of your boogeyman. I am so incredibly sorry. Believe me. We're willing to help you, and of course you will receive a discount for this inconvenience. But I really cannot let you in room number five. May I get you a different one, please? <sighs> Do I really have a choice at this point? Okay, what's available? Thank you very much. Hmm? Hugo, what did we tell you about that running? Hmm. Please be careful, darling. That's what we were going to say. <clears throat> well, didn't you tell me to let him play? Well, sure, but... Well, then next time, be so kind and don't question how I can have a chance. Hugo, come now. Hugo, come here, darling. Let's go to the room. Pardon the noise. The Keswells are... Full of energy, you know, a young family. Do they argue a lot? Sometimes. But don't worry, your new room will be perfectly quiet. You will be one floor above them. What do you think of them? Mr Keswell is a bit grumpy, but he's a famous writer. And what about his wife? Supposedly, she's a lady of leisure. <laughs> you know, she inherited a lot of money from her parents, so she can afford it. Sorry, shouldn't be talking about this. Could I have my keys, please? I'm ready to go to bed tonight. Right away, darling. Room number... Actually, it doesn't have a number. We usually don't offer this room to our guests. It used to be a staff bedroom. But no worries, it is spotless. It's on the second floor and very quiet there. That is because the other guests are all on the first floor. <sighs> That sounds lovely. Shall I call someone to help with your luggage, darling? Unfortunately, we are understaffed tonight, but our chef, Mr Rogers, will gladly assist you. That's all right. I can handle it myself. Are you sure? It's not a problem. I will call Tom and... No, I can handle it myself. As you wish, my dear. The second floor, at the end of the hallway. I hope you will enjoy your stay with us. For sure. Is this where I'm supposed to sleep? Do they even dust in here? 
If this hotel is haunted, it's this room for sure. Okay. Just relax, Alice. It's all going to be fine. I'll hand over that damn evidence and be back home tomorrow. Everything's going to be all right. No one will ever find out. And what was I supposed to do back then? I wouldn't have been able to help that child anyway. Ugh. Ugh. Not my head again. Maybe I'll take a shower. And... Oh, damn it. I haven't brought my painkillers. Maybe they'll have some hair. No. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> of course, there's nothing. <sighs> By the bed, on the bedside table, maybe in the closet. It looks so creepy. <sighs> Locked? <sighs> Where am I supposed to put my coat? Maybe I could pry open the closet. The lock looks easy enough. Should I do it? Why not? It's my room, my closet. <coughs> oh my god. So much dust. And what's this? A hat? Socks? Is this storage or did the previous guest leave it here? Oh. It's all children's clothes. <coughs> it looks like it's been lying here for a while now. Was this a child's room? Is this a coincidence? <laughs> Surely. It must be. Oh, what a nice toy. Oh, what an annoying sound. <sighs> Silence. Finally. Should I unpack or take a shower? I definitely can't go without a shower. Oh. It's not the nicest bathroom ever, but it will do. Such a strange place for a meeting. Weird people, the storm, ghosts. If this person thinks they're going to scare me, maybe they shouldn't have stolen the evidence. If anyone finds out... Judy! Hello? Hello. Damn it! Judy, are you there? To all patrols, this is Constable Wells. I'm chasing a suspect driving into town on A31. The suspect is driving a green Lotus Elite. Damn it! Why now? Oh. Hello? Hello? Must have been the wind. Or the squeaky floor. Old houses make a lot of creepy noises anyway. Even without the ghost stories. Maybe I should check it out. But I'd rather grab a towel first. What the hell am I doing? Am I really that paranoid? God, if anyone saw me like this... I should get dressed. on the floor has been swept. It seems like there's something written here. The roof will come to light. That doesn't make any sense. Unless... Unless it's... truth. 
I can see it now. It's all shaky and uneven as if an elderly person wrote that. Or a child. <laughs> this can't be a coincidence. But how did they get into my room? Or... What the hell? Should I check what's going on? Or should I ignore it? <sighs> all right, all right. Crime never sleeps, not even at Harbour Watch Inn. And if crime doesn't sleep, then neither do I.